Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Today we're going to be building the 148th scale ATST from Bandai. Uh, it looks like a really nice kit. Now it is a snap together kit, but very, very highly detailed. And since the new Rogue One movie includes these inside of them, I thought it'd be fun to do this and then build up a little diorama as well with it. So let's get started on it. As I begin construction on this, one thing that I really like a lot about the uh, Bandai kits is they're very, very true to the way uh, the original filming models were built. And what I mean by that is you can look at certain parts um, and you can see how the original filming models were used of old like Tamiya and Hasegawa and Bandai kits. And if you look at these right here, these are actually the oil heaters off of a Panther tank with some other type of bracing put inside and then that's the transmission off of something else so Bandai really goes out of their way to really copy exactly what the filming models would originally have looked like now these kits are snapped together and they hold decently well together but I will go ahead and glue all these parts together as well and that's just so as we down the road we don't have parts popping off or anything on it but you can see that the fit is really really tight and especially you want to put glue on pieces like this that are uh, gonna pop right into the front One other quick uh, thing to show you, as I begin to put these bottom pieces on the bottom of the uh, the hull, you might, guys might recognize what this is. In the original scale, this would have been in 35th, so it would have been a lot larger. But this would, is, is the shields off of a German flak gun, and they just mount right here on the bottom. And because of the way this is designed, you have complete control of the leg for uh, adjusting it to different positions.
Okay, I've got all the uh, the detail sanding done on the kit. I uh, haven't glued any of the parts together other than a few of the parts of the leg just to keep it stable. But it seems to be pretty stable just the way it was right out of the kit. Now, I am using the base as a stand for it. I plan on putting in something else later on, so it doesn't matter if we get overspray on the base. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a coat of NATO black on it to give it its nice shadow coat. just got done painting the uh, the NATO black coat on it there and it's almost a shame to do any other paint job over it. It really really looks cool just in all black. But uh, we are going to go ahead and use our white to fill in some of the panel areas so we can do our black and white effect. Now that we have our black and white coat put on to the way we want it, I've take in a little XF-19, about 60% XF-19 and about 40% of the flat white to mix up a gray color that we're going to lightly go over the entire model. We don't want to go too heavily on it or we'll cover up all the black and white coat that we just took all the time to put on. I'm showing, albeit uh, speeded up quite a bit in the film, the painting of the gray color over it and how I missed on over the vehicle. And you'll see how it gradually turns into from the black and white into a mottled effect on the, uh, the gray paint job. So it looks as if parts of the vehicle have faded and there's some shadow areas and other parts. Wanted to give everyone a, a little 360 view of the way the paint job came out. Now after the paint dried, I went and sprayed it with a uh, lacquer clear coat, uh, or actually dull coat, to seal in our paint job. But I'm very happy with the way that the paint, the black and white coat came out. There is quite a bit of difference in the tones and there's a lot of faded areas and stuff. But I wanted a vehicle that was going to look kind of used and, and kind of you know worn and it's been out somewhere for a while so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our screeching grime and some other rust and some things like that and kind of beat it up a little bit more. I wanted to try the enamels to start doing our weathering as a little change up from some of the acrylics so we're going to use the uh, odorless thinner and we're going to put a thin layer down on the area that we're going to weather first and I like wetting it down a little bit that makes the uh, the paint actually flow a little bit better over so starting out using our streaking grime take a little bit on the brush I'll zoom in here a little bit for you guys and we'll just start kind of heavily putting it over all of the little cracks and recesses and nooks and crannies and although it appears kind of heavy right now we are going to thin it down with a uh, our flat brush and kind of blend it all together Now taking our flat brush that's been dipped in thinner, we're going to gradually start to pull off some of the excess. And as we do this right here, you want to take your brush and blot it on a paper towel to remove some of the paint. That's what I'm doing off camera right there. So we bring a, a brand new clean brush back out and you can see how it starts to pull off the excess but still leaves a lot behind in all the cracks and crevices. Now I'm also going to add a little bit of the light rust color and not necessarily to make it look like rusty but it's kind of a nice light brown, brownish red that will mix well with the streaking grime. So it's just a matter of going back and forth over these colors and blending it together with the paintbrush that's been dipped in thinner lightly.
quickly uh, as the paint starts to dry the, the really cool effect that we get with the uh, the enamels as a weathering agent up on top but we're gonna do some streaks that go down on little areas that would have stuck out that would have collected dirt and as like rain and other stuff have hit it it started to cause streaks going down the side of the vehicle and same process we're gonna put a little bit on and then using our brush dipped in thinner you're gonna start pulling away the excess and don't forget to clean the brush after every time you load it up after pulling parts off Also going to do this same thing now all over the turret, especially around all these areas to really highlight the panels really well. And you can even do a, a thin, thin coat over the entire flat surface too. And what that'll do is kind of give you kind of a dirty area. And remember, you can with the enamels because you have a lot of drying time, you can go back over it and remove more and more depending on how you like it to look. You can also go over and do multiple coats. Uh, the last coat I kind of pulled a little bit too much off, I thought, so I thought I'd put a little bit more on and let it build up a little bit more in the, uh, the crevices. The last little thing I want to do to this here is we're going to use our same XF19 and 20 mixture, the exact same color paint that we used to paint the vehicle. But now that the vehicle's been dull coated and has wash all over it, uh, I started doing it right here and hopefully you can see it pretty well. I'm going to use that same color and we're going to dry brush some scratches all over the vehicle. And that's what uh, we've kind of done right here. And they're not scratches that are, that are gonna rust or go through anything, it's just like scratches in the, the dirt. And it kind of gives a nice little highlight appearance, like we're like on the claws right here on the bottom, and we can hit some of it. it and it's more or less just creating a, a bright area where, where light is hitting it to kind of give it a little bit more contrast. So I'm only gonna do it lightly, just slightly over the whole vehicle, but since I did it right here, I thought that's a good place to kind of show you what I've actually done on it. But we'll also do it all around and through here. In fact, we can even do a little bit while we're talking about it. And you can just see it just on the very, very tops, it's just gonna brighten everything up just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that throughout the vehicle and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I want to show you the uh, the final outcome of the way the ATSD came out. Uh, Bandai should be very, very, very proud of this particular model. And like I said, even though it's a snap together kit, the detail is just incredible on this kit. And now that we've gone ahead and weathered and highlighted all the areas, uh, the thing's just just beautiful looking. Give you a, a spin around. Um, very, like I said earlier in the video, I was very, very happy the way Bandai copied the original filming model down to different parts that were off original 1970s Tamiya kits. Just looks very, very good. Now, this kit is, because it's snap, super simple to put together. In fact, uh, for any type of age limit, you know, on from like 8 on up, should have no problem at all putting this together. And since the, uh, the kit looks so cool, uh, don't go away yet. What I thought I would do on this now is build a uh, diorama, a tree diorama like the forest moon of Endor, 
uh, to kind of put this in. Uh, as you guys all know, that Rogue One movie is coming out this week here in the United States. It's probably been out in a few other places already. So kind of excited about that. That's what got me going on this particular build. So uh, let's build a kind of a simple diorama. We're going to use the old diorama pieces that we had from the, from the Hetzer, where we used the, the grass mat. So let me show you what we're going to do. ST. Now this is the diorama that we had started and we had put the, uh, the Hetzer on. So what I've done is I've just pulled that off for now and we're going to change up quite a bit in here. I've gone ahead and drilled a bunch of holes inside the base because we're going to actually put a, our forest in. So pull this part back a little bit and we'll have all of our forest trees including a couple of broken ones and I've got about eight or nine holes built into here. But before we start putting those into the base, I want to put a few rocks in move you guys a little bit closer. And I've actually just taken just rocks from outside. Uh, they look like good type boulders that we'll just put into place here. We'll cover up some of the dirt because we're going to get rid of most of this road. We're going to cover it up back up with grass and things like that. So let's get started on that. I'm going to uh, apply this rock right here, but what I thought I would do first was apply a thick layer of the uh, the mud, and this will act as two things. A, it'll it'll blend the area in around it, but it'll also act to adhere the rock to the actual base. Kind of want to have a thick layer of this down so we can just push it right into it. And like I said, we want a decent amount down so that when we push the rock into it, we can now go back and blend around here. Now, I am going to put grass and stuff as well, so I just want to blend this up to that area. And we'll also fill in all these things. This is where the tracks got ripped off the uh, original base. So I'm going to go ahead and finish puttying this all in and filling in back those cracks that we had over there. Okay, now that we have a, a nice layer of the mud all over the place, we're going to start using our clump bushes. And just to start to fill in some of the areas around the side. And now we'll put a layer of grass down as well but we'll use a couple of different types of bushes along the way to kind of blend it all together i went ahead and used the uh, static grass like i was talking about earlier plus some real fine ballast uh some tan color to kind of blend in with the color of the uh, surrounding terrain and now these trees are not glued in yet that's why they're not straight but we have the holes drilled so we're just going to use some white glue to glue up the trees and actually there's going to be a couple more in there and then the vehicle should fit right here in the middle and give us a, a nice scenery for it. Well, here we are. Here's our uh, simple diorama that we put together to uh, show off the ATST. Uh, I haven't attached it down yet, so it's, it falls over very easily. What I'll probably end up going ahead and doing is just putting a uh, metal rod into the leg that we can drill down in so we can place it in there. I want to take some pictures of it outside as well eventually too with some real trees in the background to kind of give it some depth and stuff. So so I want to thank you as always for watching and uh, please stay tuned because we have more videos coming.